this day is set apart for something that generations will recall, generations will remember. You will remember these five days of this fasting. You will remember this day to the glory of God. We thank God of heaven for what started in the morning and what has started even this evening. And we thank him. Now we are taking it to the next level, the next level. Today, like I said earlier, we are fighting or rather engaging into a battle, a warfare, a warfare over and against any force that has vowed, that has pledged, that has covenanted that you will not fulfill the purpose of your life that you will not reach that height Jehovah has ordained for you. And I did take time to explain in the morning the implications of this matter. We looked at the issue of the calling of God, the purpose of your life, that nobody came into this world for a, for, for a joke. You didn't come into this world to just feel a space. No, you came into this world for a mission. You came into this world for an assignment, an assignment that is particular to you, is about you, is about you. God created you, formed you, shaped you, gifted you, equipped you, trained you. Even the ups and downs of life are all part of the training. And God is training you because of something he wants to do with you, because of something he wants to do for you. In the course of Bible study of today, you know, our study today was in the book of Acts chapter number 12. And as I was having that study with my family earlier today, the, something just flashed in my spirit and that, that angered me. And that's the story of the man they call Herod. You notice that in the book of Matthew chapter two, verse 13 and verse 16, Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 and verse 16. I saw that when Jesus was born, this man they call Herod came after him. He wanted to eliminate him. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. And then I will read verse 15, 16. Look at that. He said, after the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell thee to return. Because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. The Herod was going to search for Jesus the son of God that came to save the world. He was going to catch him and kill him. It was so serious that the angel of the Lord had to appear to Joseph to tell him, run, run, escape immediately with this child. Now that is how determined, how desperate this Herod was. And mind you, it wasn't Herod, but there was a demonic spirit that possessed this Herod to make sure the savior of the world will not leave. Now look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. To, to, to take this matter a clearer point, verse number 16, please, 16, not 15, 16, 16. My God, me so taliende. He says, Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him, he sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and, in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the stars, the stars, the stars' first appearance. Now, this is the level of the anger, the fury of the wicked of the devil against the man, Jesus Christ, that was sent to save the world. Now, as I read this portion, I saw how desperate, how determined, how zealous the enemy can be when he is set to stop 
an agent of change, an agent of deliverance, an agent of revival. And for your information, for whatever reason you happen to find yourself in this meeting, you are one of those agents. You are one of those agents of revival, agent of change, agent of transformation, restoration, evolution that God has sent for this generation. And we saw in this portion that this force, this demon was so determined that this man shall must die. And now after eventually, you know the story, Jesus Christ escaped. And finally, Jesus Christ came back after this Herod was dealt with. And then Christ Jesus fulfilled his mission and handed the mantle over to the apostles. Now that brought me to the book of Acts chapter 12, which we read today. You notice in that Acts chapter 12, the Bible said that this same Herod, this same demon, this same demon that entered into the first one came again. He said, now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands and vexed certain of the church. He vexed the church. He vexed the church. He was determined to destroy the church. I was meant to kill their leader when he was born newly. I missed it. And finally, he masterminded, and of course, when they killed him, he they concluded that we have finally succeeded. Our mission is achieved, accomplished. But little did he know that by killing him, that he they, they multiplied him. And now the servants of God took over from him and they continued. The Herod came again and was vexed. He was vexed. He was so desperate and he went ahead and killed James. And when he killed James and saw that killing James pleased the people, it pleased the people, he went further and arrested Peter. Then we are the days of unliving bread. And when he had apprehended him, when he apprehended Peter, planning to kill him in verse 4, and he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarter, quarter nuns of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But thanks be to God that prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison and smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, quickly, quickly. And his chain fell off his hands. You know the rest of the story. Now, I'm, I'm so angry within my spirit because of this spirit, this demon, this personality that goes against the chosen ones of God, that goes after the sons of God to annihilate them, to behead them, to imprison them, to crucify them, to terminate them, to silence them, to ensure that they don't fulfill their mandate to ensure that the mission of God is not accomplished. And that is why we're here today. Servant of God, I said to you, your mission you must accomplish. Your assignment on earth must be fulfilled. You will not be cut short. You will not end up at the middle of the way. The same spirit which is manifested in the life of, of Jezebel, the same spirit manifested in the time of, of Elijah, in the form of Jezebel, going after the servant of God to kill him, to make sure he does not live to terrorize the kingdom of Satan any longer. It was so furious that the great Elijah, the great Elijah wanted to escape, wanted to, to, to wish that, he, that it was better for him to die. 
that the torment was too much. The persecution was too much. The, the attack was too much. God, please take my life. Now, I know that if we should ask each individual to tell his or her story, you will be, you are, your ears will tingle with what you hear. But today, we are going to pray. First prayer is to war against the spirit that was operating in Jezebel, the spirit that was operating in Herod, that always go for the Peter, that always go for the Christ, that always go for the, the, the key pillars, the key voice, the key messenger, the men, the women that carry the mantle, that carry the deliverance grace, that carry the grace, the unction, the mission of saving their people and bringing revolution and revival. So we're going to pray. Now, I want you to look at your life. And as if you are in a physical combat, as if you are in the battlefield, you are in the ring, you are in the ring, in the wrestling ring with your opponent. And that opponent is called, there is this demon walking through all of these people that they go after the men of God. You don't know what I've been through. Myself speaking to you, I should have been in the grave by now. I remember God sent me the first mission God sent me in my, when I was still back home. And when I was preparing for it, the enemy came to eliminate me. I had a fatal accident that remains a mystery, a mystery. How I didn't die is a mystery. The people with me in that vehicle died and God mysteriously saved me. My legs were broken and was to be amputated. But God mysteriously again stopped the doctors from cutting my leg. And my leg, I stayed in the hospital for almost nine months. And my leg was restored again. And I am standing doing what I was created for. The enemy was determined to kill me at that point. I found myself in another part of, part of the world, you know, in a school, and the enemy sent an agent of the devil to kill me. That's a story of another day. But God mysteriously, mysterious, in fact, that one, God told me to leave that school, leave that college. I, I left the college, went to another university. I didn't know why God insisted. He literally commanded me, leave this school now. Leave this school now. It was when I left, the agent of the devil that was sent to kill me ran mad. Because the demon that sent her said, if you don't get this man, if you don't get him, you will destroy you. At that time, God said to me, escape. I didn't know. I left the school and my family couldn't explain it. Why should you be in the final year you had to leave? It was a madman's decision. I didn't know why I left. I went to another school. And it was when I left, then the lady was made mad. She went mad and began to confess. She began to confess all over the campus what she was sent to do, but she failed and they struck her. She went mad. The, the, this demon we are talking about is not a joke. I can't, uh, because of time, I can't go further. The enemy always go after the chosen ones. I know if I ask people here not to begin to tell their story, you are, your heart will blow up because of experiences. Now, you know that this devil doesn't get tired. Imagine him coming to Jesus Christ, to tempt him, to destroy him on the mount. But after he fell, the Bible says he left Christ. Satan left Christ a while, looking for an opportunity to strike him again. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ kept conquered. Because he conquered, I will conquer. You will conquer. So I want us to begin to pray, Lord, today, any agent of Satan on assignment that want to ruin my life, let the judgmental fire of God, that death, the, 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 what do you call him, Herod? You know how Herod ended up? Look at it, verse, verse, verse number 23. See how Herod ended up. Verse 23 of that psalm, that I, I uh, what is, um, um, Acts, verse, 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 verse 12. He says in verse 23, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. him. The angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. 
But the word of the Lord grew and multiplied. The word of the Lord grew and multiplied. If Herod had continued to torment the servants of God, believe me, sir, believe me, ma, the church would have been limited. The church, would have, he would have been killing from one to another, from one to another. If not that the angel of the Lord came and commanded Peter to escape immediately, immediately, Herod was going to kill him. Of course, you know, it was the night preceding the morning when Peter was to be killed that the angel appeared. We need to go now to rescue this man in a hurry. If not, Peter would have been killed. The leader would have been killed. I am a Peter. You are a Peter. There are Peters in this meeting. And the enemy goes after their calling, their mandate, their business, their ministry, their marriage, their family, their health, and their calling. But my anger this morning is, evening, that the, 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 the same thing God did, he will do it again today. Believe me, servant of God, there's going to be judgment in this evening. This week, this week, this month, God is going to execute judgment against every agent of Satan that is walking under the same spirit that Herod walked with. Jehovah himself will strike them. Remember how Jezebel died. You know how Jezebel died? God is killed him in a mysterious way, and 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 his her body was 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 eaten up by, by animals. God disappointed her, disgraced her, and destroyed her. God's judgment is going out today. I saw something that that made me to that that, that made me to know that God is taking this matter serious. Look at the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28. Jeremiah chapter 28 from verse 15. He said, and, and then Jeremiah 28 from verse 15. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet. Here now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent thee. The Lord has not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. For thus says the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year, this year, thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. Verse 12, 17, verse 17 says, So Hananiah the prophet died the, died, died the same year in the seventh month. He died the same year in the seventh month. Now, when the Lord took me to this scripture, I understood that this month of July is a month of judgment against wickedness. It's a month of judgment. He said, in the seventh month, near the wicked, false, deceitful prophet was struck by the Lord. The Lord God of heaven is on a, on a vengeance mission, is on a vengeance mission against all the Hananias, the false prophets, the agents of robbery, agents of the devil that are robbing your destiny, opposing you, blocking you through witchcraft, sorcery, divination in different ways. The agent of the devil that was walking through Herod, going after the chosen ones to kill them. He killed James and saw that the people were happy. He went after Peter and the church said, no, we won't take it anymore. We won't take it anymore. As they began to pray, the angel of the Lord went and slew him and he died. I want us to begin to pray, Lord, arise for me. Arise for me. Every agent of the devil that is after my calling, my destiny, my mission, my assignment. Oh God, what you did to Herod, let it happen to them in different ways, different form. Lord, let your judgment go forth. Let your power go forth. Let your sword go forth. Shall you begin to from wherever you are? They came to pray. Lord God, arise, arise, O Jehovah, and let every year of my life, agent of Satan, mighty God, that Jesus Christ is seeking to destroy my purpose, my future, my God, my God, them the judgment of in the mighty name of Jesus, 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 Jesus
in Jesus mighty name we pray in that verse 24 he said but the word of God he said and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him the angel of the Lord smote Herod and what happened and he was eating of worms and he gave up the ghost. A man that was busting, puffing up just a while. In fact, I saw something even before the angels smote him to show how desperate this man was. In verse 19, he said, and when Herod had sought for him, that is after Peter escaped, by the intervention, sudden intervention of the angel. After, after, after Peter escaped, look at verse 19. He said, and when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he searched for him everywhere, mobilized his army and his servant. They were searching for him everywhere. Whatever is searching for you will not see you. Whatever is searching for you will not find you. Whatever demon that is searching after your destiny, he, he will not succeed. Now what happened? They couldn't find him. Where am I? Examined and the keepers. He now gathered the keepers, examined them, and commanded that, that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Samaria, to, to Caesarea, rather, and there abode. He was so furious that he sighed for him and then invited all the people who were keeping the guard and all of them were killed. All of them were killed. And he was still not happy. He moved to another place. He was so furious, searching for this man. People of God, the enemy will locate you. Before they arrive, you have re you have moved to the next level. They will not locate you. I want you to pray, Lord, whatever witch, wizard, on assignment, on assignment. Just like I told you a story, this woman was sent to kill to to terminate my life, but God escaped, made me to escape in His own wise way. All right, and. 
after I left, the forces came against her and turned her into madness. I don't know what has become of her now. Now, I want us to pray this prayer. Lord, order my steps. Imagine if Peter did not escape when the angel told him to run. He would have remained there. He would have been destroyed. Two prayers we're going to pray now. Number one, Lord, let not the forces that are seeking me to terminate me, let them not find me. Let them not find me. Number two, I want you to pray. Peradventure you are in prison. Peradventure you are, you are not yet dead. They've not killed you, but you are in prison. Imagine Peter in prison. What could he do? He couldn't go to the places he was meant to go. He was tied down, limited at a spot. It's possible there is somebody here who is moving around, but is spiritually imprisoned, financially imprisoned, ministry-wise imprisoned. You have been brought to, to, to live at the mercy of the forces of Jezebel, at the mercy of the forces of Herod, waiting for the final annihilation, waiting for the final killing and the termination of that life. There are pastors that are in prison. They do not even know. Evangelists, businessmen that are in prison, laboring, struggling, staying behind walls, behind bars. At one spot, you can't move forward. How do you know you're in prison? When you can't move forward, you are at the same spot, day after day, week after week, month, year after year, at the same spot. That means that is a sentence over that person's life. That is a sentence of that person's life. Whatever has kept you in prison, I want you to revolt. Lord, send your angel to rescue me now. Send your angel to rescue me now. I have to change position. Life cannot remain like this. Ministry cannot remain like this. My business cannot remain like this. This marriage cannot remain like this. This health condition cannot remain like this. So people are in a health prison because the devil is after their calling. They are mandate. The problem is not that sickness. The problem is not that hope or that woman, the problem is that there is a demon that is at work to make sure you are not yourself as to fulfill your mandate. Arise, oh God, and let the prison world collapse. Let the chain be broken and let the forces of the enemy that are trying to hold me captive, let them be blinded. Release me, retrieve me, escape me from this place to their own confusion and their own disaster. Shall we begin to pray? Please open your mouth, servant of God, and walk war, 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 against every prison gate, prison center. Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
in the name of Jesus, people of God, two more prayers I want us to pray tonight. I was taken to the case of Hannah in the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 6. The Bible said that something strange, something strange happened to this woman they call Hannah. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 6. He said that God shot the womb of Hannah. God shot the womb of Hannah. And the, 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 the Penina, is that the name of that other woman, began to make mockery of her began to make jest of her, began to make mockery of her. And she couldn't take it again. She couldn't take it again. They went for a, a, the usual you know, celebration. And after that, she stayed back. They were eating, she refused to eat. She was in tears, she was in pain. She couldn't take the mockery again. Her destiny was under contention. And the, the amazing thing is that it was not demons that shot her womb. It was God. Not Jezebel this time. Not Herod. God shot the womb. Why? And the work God did, for whatever reason, pushed this man to begin to lament. She cried unto God. It looks like God was waiting for this woman to get to a point. And when she couldn't take it anymore, she began to cry. She began to wail. And when everybody left, she stayed back and was wailing. She was wailing. She was in pain. She was wailing. She was wailing. She cried so until Eli came out and saw her and said, ah, this woman is so drunk at this early hour. She said, no, sir, I am not drunk. I am a woman with a heavy heart. I am stressed. I am in trouble. I can't take it anymore. And as she was weeping and crying and rolling before the Lord, Hannah, I mean, Elijah saw her condition and she said, if the Lord will give me a man child, I pledge his life. I donate him to God. I surrender him to God. I'll give you a way to God, to serve God. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been the desire of God because God knew that a lie had expired. Eli and her children have been judged and found wanting and God was looking for a replacement agent, a replacement agent and when this woman made that vow, if God would give me a man child, I would donate him to serve God all the days of his life the moment that was said the Eli who has been rejected by God made this pronouncement and God honored it, even though God has re rejected him but God honored his statement the woman went home and considered and became pregnant and that was the image of the greatest priest, priest the greatest priest of that generation Samuel Samuel came Samuel came only one son took over the whole world took over the whole states the children of the one that was uh, uh, I, I, I mean abusing her nobody know their name I don't know their name only Samuel stood out. I want us to pray. The Lord laid in my heart that he wants you to cry to him tonight over something that has been tormenting you, over something that seems to have put you at the spot. You are distressed about it. You have worried. You have complained. You have fasted. You have gone everywhere. Nobody seems to understand your pain. Nobody seems to understand your trouble. But there is a God in heaven who understands. Maybe there is a vow God wants you to make. Maybe that is a pledge God wants you to make. Maybe that is a level of commitment or consecration God wants you to step into. That was what opened the womb of, of uh, what's his name, Hannah, and she conceived. God is waiting, was looking for a son, and this woman caught it in the spirit, and that was it. Is there anything God wants me to do? God, is there anything you want me to do? Is there anything you are lacking? God, do you have a need? Do you have a need? God, do you have a need? Please, this is a very serious matter. 
There is somebody here. God is raising you to solve a problem for this generation. God is raising you to do something for him or raising your children or raising your husband or raising your wife to do something that God has been looking for somebody that will do it or it is you that God wants you to do something very great, big, major for him. I want us to pray. Lord, let this barrenness end today. Let this barrenness end today. Let this fruitlessness end today. Let this mockery end today. Let this abuse end today. Let this torture end today. And Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm ready to do it. Shall we begin to pray? No more contention. No more Father, argument. No more controversy. in Jesus mighty name we pray people of God let's take the last prayer and then I will pray for us Job chapter 42 verse number 10 today is so 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 important in what God wants to do for the rest of your life and I want us to use all, all scriptural keys to unlock every gate that was shut against you. In the book of Job 42 verse 10, as you can see, say when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. How could that happen? Do you know his age? When he lost all his children, he lost every business he had, all his estates, all his empires, we are set ablaze. A very wealthy, godly man, wealthy and godly. One day he lost everything at that age. Yet the Bible said, God restored him. He recovered. He recovered. A servant of God, get ready for a speedy recovery, speedy recovery, speedy restoration. That is un unexplainable, unexplainable. Even you, you can't explain it. Look at the man whose body was totally finished, smelling, decayed, and he was just breathing. God hid him, speedily, supernaturally restored him all. This is your story. Now, I want you to take five people. Prophetic number, five. Select five people on this platform. All right? 
or if they are not here, but somebody that you can think of who is going through a trouble time, who is going through a trouble time. You want God to unlock this fellow. You want God to unlock the destiny of this person, all right? Either in this group or someone somewhere. I want you to cry out the way you cried out to God for your life. I have to God for five people here. And I know that there is a God in heaven who intervened in the case of Job, who is still alive. He is still alive to intervene in your situation. Your story is about to be told that God took you out of the mighty clay, out of your misery, out your prison out of the place of, of 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 reproach and mockery and elevated you to glory shall we begin to pray choose five people either in the group Father, or God, I present her before you, my Father. I present her before you, King of Glory. Oh, Lord, 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 the God of heaven and earth, mighty God, you will restore her and exalt her everything she has ever dreamt or imagined in the mighty name of the Lord. Father, <laughs> Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen.
can you please stretch forth your hand, servant of God? Wherever you are, stretch out your hand. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Father, I hold my hand with your hand. And I hold my hand with every man and every woman, every child, every family, wherever they are. Lord, even those who will watch this broadcast after now. Lord, I hold my hand with your hand and I hold hand with this brother, with this sister, with this couple, with this family. Lord, I decree that every force that want to stop them is hereby stopped in the name of Jesus. Every force, every power that want to stop the growth, the increase, the, the, the glory, the manifestation of the blessings yes. of God, the honor of God, the destiny, the calling, the mission, the assignment, the mandate of God, whatever force of wickedness that is vowed to stop my brother, to stop my sister, in the name of Jesus, we stop you in the name of Jesus. We stop you in the name of Jesus. We stop you in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus, oh Amen. God, has struck Herod. You Amen. God has struck Herod. Thank you God has struck Jezebel. Arise and do it again. Arise and do it again. The way you Herod over stop the forces that yes. want to stop your son and daughter. Stop them in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop the forces from the from the from the ancestors. From the ancestors. From the ancestors. From the ancestors. Let it be stopped now in the name of Jesus. Let the chain be broken in the name of Jesus. Let the gate open. Let the gate open. Let the gate open. Let the gate open. In the mighty name of Jesus, I call the preaching open. Preaching gate open. In the name of Jesus, preaching gate broken. Preaching gate broken. In the name of Jesus, thank you, King of Kings. Blessed be your holy name, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. In the mission you came for. In the mission you came for. In the assignment of the life. In the mandate of the land, be free from every restraint. Be free from the mandate of my life. Be free from every prison. Be free from every blockage. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Accelerate your life from this day. So I receive acceleration. I receive supernatural acceleration. Supernatural acceleration I receive of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Supernatural acceleration. No more hindrance. No boundaries. No limitation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And all the thank you. Thank you. I cover every man and every woman here with the blood of yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 The glory of God will go with you. Thank you will have rest. Amen. You have rest. You have rest. You have rest. You have rest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Bible Jesus. said, when God restored Job, you mm. restored Job, my new God. Life. Restore me now. Restore me now. Double. double. What I lost. Double. Thank you, Jesus. What is yes, Lord. Yes, Receive Lord. double honor in the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. 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 Double honor in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Double acceleration in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I receive. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you are Father. Amen. The Thank yes, you, Father. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The God of restoration. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Is restoring you. you. Restoring yes, the years. Amen. Restoring Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Restoration, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, amen. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 